This week on Christian World News, a new wave of persecution sweeps through China. We'll show you what's behind this latest crackdown on believers. Plus, insider information on American pastor Andrew Brunson's legal proceedings and how they're designed to make him fail. And Christians on the front lines of volunteer efforts in fire-ravaged California tell stories of people finding beauty from the ashes. Welcome to Christian World News, everyone. I'm Wendy Griffith. George Thomas is on assignment. Well, for years, Christians in China have prayed that President Xi would provide the country with more religious freedom. But now a new wave of persecution is taking place. Christians are being jailed and churches demolished. Gary Lane brings us the latest on the crackdown. Scenes like these are becoming more frequent under China's president for life, Xi Jinping. Shattered concrete and a few chairs are all that remain of this house church in Henan province. And this church was totally destroyed, you can tell. For years, this was the place of worship for 100 Chinese Christians. Last January, government officials with buzz saws demolished the church. They seized Bibles and computers and arrested some of the worshipers, including a 14-year-old girl. Chinese authorities say this church was illegal, unregistered, and not part of the state-controlled Three-Self Patriotic Church. China Aid documents persecution and helps the victims. Bob Fu says President Xi is launching a new wave of Christian oppression. We have seen, uh, you know, churches being uh, forcefully demolished and uh, Christians were sentenced to 10 years, 13 years, for simply organize a peaceful house of worship at their homes. 63-year-old Seventh-day Adventist Xu Zhishuan used to lead a house church with 30 Christians in her living room, singing, praying, and worshiping God. Last March, she shut it down after local officials ordered the house church closed. The persecution is causing more church growth. About one of every 10 Chinese are now Christian. Columbia University political science professor Andrew Nathan explains Communist Party officials feel threatened by the rapid growth. I think that uh, the leadership is viewing all these Christian congregations as a kind of dry tinder that could spark up in a certain scenario. And they, they think that that foreign uh, forces, the United States, missionaries and so forth, would like to spark up this tinder. Authorities have also removed crosses from the roofs of at least 1,700 churches. Human rights lawyers and Christians have simply disappeared. Some have died from mistreatment in prison. Others have escaped to the West. This woman ended up in Texas after police arrested her pastor husband. Authorities warned their children would be denied an education in China because of their Christian beliefs. She said the government barred church members from baptism, and police even interrupted their Christmas service. Christians say officials in many towns are now pressuring people to remove posters of the cross and Jesus and replace them with images of President Xi. Fu suggests it's just another attempt at communist thought control. So I think it has to do with the, really the President Xi Jinping's ideology. He's again, you know, he is uh, really wanting to take China to the Chairman Mao's uh, old uh, kind of path um, by exercising, uh, you know, more uh, political control and mind control. Former House Church leader Xu says the government should not view Christians as a threat. We pray for the country, she says, and for the people, hoping our country will become better, prosperous, and strong. Despite the government crackdown, within the next 20 years, China is expected to become the world's biggest Christian nation. Gary Lane, CBN News. Well, Gary, you're with us now. What's yeah. behind this latest crackdown? It seemed like things were going well in China. Well, as best as you yeah, think they better. would go, right? Uh, but the problem is, President Xi, last March, the Communist Party, said he can be president as long as he wants to be, that there are no longer term limits on the Chinese president. So if he wants to be president for life, he can be president for life. And like any good emperor, <laughs> uh, you crack down on your opponents. And the Communist Party, Wendy, has long... 
uh, felt that Christians threatened their existence. Right. Because as long as Christians are worshiping God and looking to the afterlife, mm -hmm. they're not looking to the state uh, for their rights and their benefits. They look to God. Well, as you said in your piece, China is on track to become the largest Christian nation in the world. Yes. How can that be with all this crackdown? Well, persecution's good for church. And right. I was told that many years ago by Samuel Lamb, who's now deceased. Yeah. But Samuel Lamb told me when I asked him that, he said, look, before I went to prison, he was in prison for 20 years, Wendy. Wow. Before I went to prison the first time, uh, church was only 200 members. I got out of prison, it was 900. And then they confiscated the church and the church grew and it grew to 2,000. Then he looked to me and smiled and he said, persecution good for church. <laughs> so the person through the persecution, the church grows because what happens, the Chinese government thinks if they shut the doors of a church, then that's the end of it. But everybody scatters and then they start house churches, those grow, and before you know it, uh, China by 2030, Wendy, yeah. uh, will likely have predicted as many as 240, maybe 250 wow. million Christians. It's incredible. The largest in the world. What can the global church do, Gary, to help China right now? Well, I ask Chinese believers there when I meet with them, they say, look, first we need Bibles. Don't think we can get them from the government because it's only what the government gives us. We need additional Bibles and smuggle in Bibles. Also pray for us. So yeah. pray for them and support them in that way. All right. Prayer and Bibles. Thanks, yes. Gary. We appreciate sure. it. Well, despite high levels, high level negotiations between Turkish and U.S. officials in Washington, American pastor Andrew Brunson remains under house arrest in Turkey. And many of his supporters wonder why. CBN's Jennifer Wishon brings us the firsthand account from inside the courtroom. A courtroom designed to make Pastor Brunson feel defeated, bogus witnesses bribed by the prosecution, and the power of forgiveness. An eyewitness takes us inside Pastor Brunson's persecution in Turkey. The court uh, used to be like a basketball court or some sort of sports court that has been turned into a courtroom right next to a very large prison. And uh, way up front, there are three judges on a race dais, and very low is Pastor Andrew Brunson, witnesses for the prosecution, and Pastor Brunson's lawyer. There are over 500 chairs between him and the area where observers like me and his wife are allowed to seat. Christina Ariaga of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Liberty attended Pastor Brunson's most recent hearing. Seated beside his wife, Noreen, she watched in disbelief. Because Pastor Brunson cannot see very well from far away, anytime he looks back towards his wife, she stands up and puts her hand over her heart so he knows he's not alone. Pastor Brunson sat there while he heard former church members, people probably that he baptized, people that he had tea with, testify against him. And the judge at one point uh, turned to him around noontime and asked Andrew Brunson to speak for himself. And he said, my faith teaches me to forgive. So I forgive those who just testified against me. There was a chill in the room. I know his wife, who was graceful and, and extremely strong, probably found it to be a natural answer. but. I, I was stunned and moved to tears when, when he said that. Why would his church members, people that he was intimate with, uh, testify against him? I imagine these people were under tremendous pressure to keep their jobs or feed their families. We don't know what kind of threats they were under. Brunson has been transferred from prison to house arrest, but Ariaga fears that puts him at risk. But he's in a terribly dangerous situation because the Brunsons are portrayed in the Turkish press as people who are against the state of Turkey. And I have great fears there's, there's going to be an increase of incitement to violence against him and no one will be able to stop someone, a mob that tries to go and kill him. Armed with sanctions and the power to withhold F-35 fighter jets Turkey wants to purchase, U.S. officials from the White House to Congress continue to pressure Turkey's President Recep Erdogan to release Brunson. His next hearing is October 12th. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Thanks, Jennifer. Coming up, how God is still moving despite the massive devastation of the California wildfires. Angels were created to serve God. These magnificent beings have awesome power beyond our comprehension. CBN presents Angels, Their Power, Purpose, and Presence. 
In Pat's latest DVD, you'll get the biblical insight into these mysterious spiritual creatures and discover the important role they play in God's kingdom and in your life. We're also going to meet real people who have come face to face with these divine creatures and have experienced what can only be described as miraculous, life-changing encounters. As he started pulling me through, it was just a burst of white light. My thought is the angels were there to hold me together. I knew that this was something that was happening and it was supernatural. Angels, their power, purpose, and presence. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your copy of Angels. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Here in America, wildfires are consuming the state of California. The good news is, for the first time this week, firefighters say they're making some progress. However, they say it may be September before all the fires are under control. More than 14,000 firefighters are battling 18 different blazes across the state. One is the largest in California's history, spanning 443 square miles and roughly the size of Los Angeles. Well, one fire alone destroyed more than 1,000 homes, forcing tens of thousands to evacuate. CBN's Heather Sells reports from California that in the middle of the chaos, churches and volunteers braved the danger to give victims help and hope. The devastation here in Redding is historic, but the tragedy is also uniting the local community and the church. At Bethel Church Sunday morning, thousands lifted their hands and sang about God's love in the flames. You can still see the smoke here from the nearby car fire, which destroyed entire neighborhoods and seemed to cherry pick homes in others, leaving some to rejoice, others to mourn, and everyone to question their safety. Pastor Elizabeth Wanning spent the last week as a volunteer counselor at Bethel. Whether you're in the evacuation area or you've lost a home or whether your home was completely safe, the whole community is on edge. The air quality here is poor and churches are handing out breathing masks. One of the many needs local churches are working together to meet in what they believe is a new chapter of unity. We've had over 30 churches meeting together, praying together, uh, trying to problem solve. Five churches are supporting a Red Cross shelter at Cross Point Community Church, and Bethel is hosting a Salvation Army distribution center. Mercy Chefs offers meals, and the center offers food and clothing for those who've lost everything, including at least 25 on Bethel's staff. We have people on our teams, they lost their homes. Most of us, lots of us were displaced. I was, our, our own family was displaced. Bethel member Tony Stoltzfus lost his home, which doubled as his office. Three days after the fire started, he woke up to evacuation orders. Uh, we threw our suitcases in the car, we got the pets, we got our computers. Mary Lou Conkle lost her home as well. Didn't even know what I was doing, just throwing clothes in. Then I began to get, grab my Bibles. For these two and thousands of others, housing is the urgent need. They're piled up in, in their friends' homes. So, um, you know, every available couch, every available place of, of floor space, people are moving into those spaces. The government should allow victims to start sifting through the wreckage of their properties this week. 
Many churches are sponsoring chaplains who will escort and help families during the painful process. That's very important. The first time they see a home burned, they just fall on their knees and cry, and you have to be there to support them. For Tony, the tears have already come, but he's grateful for a handful of mementos he still has and his work as a personal coach, which uniquely prepared him. A lot of what I do in my work is teach people to detach their desires from the things in the world that they think will fill them and find the desire of their heart in their relationship with Jesus. Mary Lou is holding fast to her faith and a word she received from the Lord. Being an intercessor, I just was praying in the Spirit. I had, I had no words, I had nothing other than just praying in the Spirit. And even before we left the house, I kept hearing new beginnings, new beginnings, new beginnings. Experts warn it will take years for Reading to rebuild, but this city is hoping to set an example. Pastor Chris is teaching from his life verse in Isaiah. It's only God who could take ashes and make beauty out of it. It's only God that can take a disaster and, and create hope in the midst of it. Reporting in Reading, Heather Sell, CBN News. Thanks, Heather. A group of black pastors speak out after facing backlash for meeting with the president. What they said next. Parents, the Superbook Bible app is a great way to get your child reading the Bible because in today's busy world, we can use some help. The free Superbook Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games, watching cool videos, discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available now. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. that is upside down and on fire. These people are trapped and we need the jaws of life. My feet were on fire. The car was filling up with smoke. There was fire coming in through my left door. The steering wheel was stuck in my chest, I couldn't move. The seat belt, I kept trying to release it, but it wouldn't release. And I just screamed, God, send your angels now. I saw a set of just white hands. It was just a burst of white light. Welcome back. A sign of the times in Southern California where a real estate company forced evangelist Greg Laurie to remove billboards advertising his crusade. Pictures of Laurie holding a Bible reportedly created the backlash. The company decided to take the action. The company says that religious imagery provoked multiple complaints, including what it called a serious threat. So Harvest Evangelism submitted a new version but the company just decided to take them down completely after the complaints. A Harvest spokesman says they don't blame the company, they blame the culture. It's sad that our, our culture is, is uh, we're at this degree of intolerance. There's such intolerance against uh, the, the message of Christianity that, that we uh, aren't, aren't allowed to to state that or to publicly advertise uh, this event that is, that is going to occur. The Harvest Crusade will take place August 17th through the 19th at Angel Stadium in Anaheim. Well, a group of black pastors came under intense fire for meeting President Donald Trump at the White House to discuss prison reform. Hundreds of African-American Christians took to social media, accusing the black leaders of selling their soul to the president. 
Now, some of those who were at the meeting have responded. George Thomas brings us more on this controversy. God, we thank you for an opportunity to speak about the hearts of those who sometimes cannot fight for themselves. The reaction was fast and furious, and it erupted on social media moments after John Gray, pastor of a mega church in Greenville, South Carolina, was asked by the president to open a meeting at the White House in prayer. Dr. King said, we cannot influence a table that we are not seated at. Gray, along with a small group of other black and Hispanic pastors, was invited by Mr. Trump to discuss efforts to reform America's prison system and other issues. But their meeting got a visceral reaction from many quarters, including from fellow African-American Christians, who called the pastors and other participants shameless and contemptible for taking part in the event. Hundreds of people took to Gray's social media accounts, venting their anger. I'm so disappointed with you, wrote one person on Gray's Instagram account. Another said, I have lost all respect for him as a pastor. Gray, who says he has been critical of the administration's immigration and other policies, posted a video on social media after his meeting with the president, defending his decision to go. I did not go as a politician nor did I go under partisan rhetoric. I'm not a Democrat, nor a Republican, nor an Independent. I'm a Christian. If there's anybody who thinks they're above praying for people who sometimes they may not agree with, then you don't have the heart of Christ. Still, some of Gray's fellow African-American preachers are accusing him and other participants of selling out and tap dancing for the president at the expense of the black community. But it was perhaps this comment from Pastor Daryl Scott of Ohio, who was at the meeting with Mr. Trump, that got the most negative reaction. To be honest, this is probably going to be the, and I'm going to say this at this table, the most pro-black president that we've had in our lifetime. Because, and I try to, you know, analyze the people that I encounter. This president actually wants to prove something to our community, our faith-based mm -hmm. community, and our ethnic community. The last president didn't feel like he had to. He felt like he didn't have to prove he got a pass. Bishop Harry Jackson also attended the event. He told CBN's Charlene Aaron that despite the intense blowback, he believes it was the right thing to do. You can't be a prophet to the culture while you're standing outside of the room. Many of the people who came in to that meeting knew that they would be misunderstood, disrespected, lied on, talked about, but they came anyway. President Trump said his meeting with the inner city pastors was one of many steps his administration was taking to address the enormous challenges of reforming the country's prison system. George Thomas, CBN News. An important topic, and you can see more of the pastors' meeting with the president, including John Gray's full prayer, on our website, that's cbnnews.com. We'll be right back. Hello? Is this thing on? Hey, kids, do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Yeah! Well, do you? Yeah! Then you're going to love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes and Google Play now. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. When you give, smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, 
the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. A rare medieval Bible has finally been returned to England's iconic Canterbury Cathedral after being missing for, get this, 500 years. The Bible was found and purchased at a manuscript auction in London. The Antiques Trade Gazette reports the Bible was handwritten and illustrated by a 13th century monk. It went missing during the Protestant Reformation. Well, the Bible is the best-selling book of all time, and it's still going strong. The latest version quickly hit number one on Amazon, and as CBN's Chris Mitchell shows us, it's designed to appeal to both Christians and Jews. The Israel Bible is the only Bible that's exclusively dedicated to the land of Israel, the people of Israel, and the God of Israel. Rabbi Tuli Wise of Israel 365 saw the 70th anniversary of Israel as a great opportunity for a special version of this kind. The Bible has had such a great impact on civilization, yet it's also been the greatest source of friction and division between Jews and Christians who both claim to love the Bible. And so now the vision for the Israel Bible is that we're gonna have the opportunity to use the Bible as a source of unity between Jews and Christians and everybody who loves the Bible. So this is the Hebrew Scriptures. It's not the uh, New Testament or the Brit Hadashah. So why would Christians want to be able to read the Israel Bible? Well, first of all, you know, and I'm not a Christian, but I know that for Christians who uh, want a, the Bible that Jesus read, so the, he read the Hebrew Bible, the Tanakh. That's something that my Christian friends have pointed out to me, that this is the Bible that Jesus read. I think that there's another aspect as well that the prophets talked about how in the, in the future, Isaiah says in the future, in the end of days, the non-Jews are going to say to the Jewish people, teach us the Torah, teach us the Bible. It comes with special features in the 929 chapters. Number one is that it opens in oh, the way of the format of a Hebrew book. It opens backwards. A lot of our customers are saying, hey, wait a minute. My Bible opens backwards. That's a, it's not a mistake. We did it on purpose. All of the verses about Israel have been highlighted and transliterated so that anybody could actually read the Hebrew for themselves. And then, of course, on the bottom of every chapter, we have study notes. Wise feels this version comes at an important time because of the inaccurate criticism directed at Israel. More than any other time in history, the world's eyes are focused on Israel. You have world leaders who are saying that Israel is occupying this land. And this Bible shows that we're not occupying this land. This is the land that God gave to us. Everybody needs to be more educated in God's Word, and especially if you're confused, if you're not familiar, you know, which side to take to be supportive of Israel, to be on the fence, to be anti-Israel, just read the Bible. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Just read the Bible. It has all the answers you need. Well, thanks for joining us this week. Until next week, from all of us here at Christian World News, goodbye and God bless you.